Well, Grandpa, I really want to know what technologies I should learn in 2023. Like, what would be, what did you learn back in your day? Well, young buck, let me tell you about what I wouldn't do again. These technologies I spent hours learning only to become obsolete. I feel like we're starting off with one that is going to cause an uproar or some controversy. Not because this is incorrect what I'm saying, but because some people have such a strong attachment or love for things or more specifically for finding the yeah but in things. And especially as a YouTuber, I, I know this better than I think a lot of people when you make videos and they go, yeah, but what about this 1%? Can you guess what the first one is that honestly, I definitely will not be learning in 2023 if ever, well, definitely not. I'm never gonna be learning this. Can you guess? It's a programming language. It starts with a C, has a B in the middle, an L at the end. Give me two O's in the middle, COBOL. This is definitely not worth learning in 2023. Now, let me explain. Here are some fun facts actually about the COBOL programming language. It was actually developed in 1959, making it almost 60 years, no, over 60 years old, which is pretty wild. It definitely had its time and place where large systems were using COBOL. It was very popular and in demand. Nowadays, more popular and modern programming languages such as Python, JavaScript, Java have really replaced COBOL. And actually, according to Stack Overflow's report from 2021, I believe it was, it was only 0.3% of programmers code with COBOL. So it brings up the question, which many have asked, Tiff, if this is not that in demand anymore and people aren't learning about it as much, the people who do have these no this knowledge to maintain these systems, because there is still systems out there that are using it, they must get paid pretty amazing. And of course, this depends company to company. I can definitely see if there are programmers who have been working in COBOL for many years at the same company, they probably are banking a really large salary. The average, when I searched up online, salary for a COBOL programmer is between 60,000 and 100,000 US. Now, I, I think there's a lot of factors and variables that this isn't telling us here, like how long these programmers have been at these companies. What does that really uh, look like? Like, are they just using COBOL? or do they just use some knowledge to that and work with some more modern ones? Really interesting. So back in the day, back in my day, I should say, five different glasses. I don't know, is that what grandpas do? Maybe not. Okay, and I'll go over here. No, I'm just kidding. Not, that was not my day. I was not born yet. But back in the day, why was COBOL so popular? Just out of curiosity, what made it so popular? It was specifically designed to cater to business applications and data processing tasks on mainframe computers. So it was used extensively for many different purposes, some including financial services, government systems. You see, that's a huge area where it was used a lot in payroll and HR, inventory management, etc. And it's really interesting because a lot of high profile organizations actually still rely on COBOL based systems for critical operations. So it's definitely not extinct by any means, but it is definitely not something that I would spend time learning on in 2023. Next on the list is, I need a camera here. Can you guess what it is? Flash programming. Have you even heard of flash programming? There are some people who haven't even heard of flash programming. I've just heard rumblings about it, but here's really why it was used. Flash programming was used to create interactive multimedia content, such as animations, rich internet applications for websites, and it was developed actually by a company called Macromedia, and later in life acquired by Adobe. Flash became popular really in the 90s and early 2000s due to its ability to deliver high graphics, high quality graphics at the time, and video content all within a web browser. However, there are several factors that really contributed to Flash's decline and, or Flash's programming decline, and also to now it's completely discontinued. So unless you're looking to learn something very vintage and old school, there really is no point in learning this. Some of it being security concerns. It had a history of security vulnerabilities, which made it a target for hackers. Another being performance issues. Flash content often consumed significant system resources, causing slow loading times, high CPU usage, and also also time reduced battery life on mobile devices, which as you can imagine in the early 2000s, when smartphones were starting to come out further and further a long time, flash was just a big problem. Next up, I wanted to do something for the third one here, which was not necessarily uh, a tech programming language related because I know we have a lot of viewers or a lot of people that watch these videos that are not programmers. And the third one that I really wanted to highlight is agile, the 
agile methodology. And listen, don't come at me with the, but Tiff, but Tiff, there's butts for everything. We all have a butt. That's kind of weird. I don't know why I just said that, but you, but you get the point. What is the waterfall methodology? Well, it essentially is when a team starts with a big plan and then they work their way through that plan. Throughout working their way through that plan, there is no iterative sprints, there's no feedback, there's no potential to pivot. You have a plan of what you are going to build and you have your focus, you are building it. Whereas nowadays, a lot of companies, most companies use what's called the agile methodology, which is you work in sprints. A lot of times it's two week sprints, for example. You have tickets that you are working on uh, specific to the sprint. So for example, if you are in a product manager role, you are assigning these tickets. If you are in a developer role, you are taking these tickets. And you have this chunk of time where you are building. After that time is done, you meet and you iterate based on what you learn from the sprint, feedback maybe from some customers, bugs that have come up. What this does is it prevents you from working in this kind of linear fashion where you can't see anything about the end goal. In turn, you can actually see what you are building and move pieces along the way. Now, there's always, as I mentioned, there's always the buts. When would waterfall methodology be used? Like when would, is it still used? And it really depends. There are some companies out there that still find use for it today, but definitely if you are looking to grow a career in tech, I would focus on agile versus waterfall. Next on the list is one that I heard about quite a bit actually, and might be, oh, I feel like I say this for every, everyone, might be very controversial, but I don't think so, which is Perl scripting. Before we get into it, let's talk about what exactly even is Perl scripting. Maybe some of you don't know. So Perl scripting was a popular programming language, scripting language, I should say, in the past. And since the rise of say, Python, Ruby, and JavaScript, it's really fallen to the side. However, Perl does still have some very niche uses where it's really good to use. Of course, the obvious one being legacy system maintenance. For systems that are already using Perl, it's definitely an area where you can continue to maintain and grow a career because it's very niche. Now, would I still learn it based on that? Absolutely not. Other areas though that Perl is still used, one is bioinformatics, which Perl has a long history actually of the use in bioinformatics and computer biology. I feel like I stumble over those words. They're not common words I use, bioinformatics. And with many existing libraries and tools specifically designed for these fields, such as let's say BioPerl. So because it already has a lot of these tools and libraries set in place, it's still some companies go to. And then also too, it's used for text processing and manipulation. Perl has built in support for advanced regular expressions and powerful text manipulation features. So it makes it a good choice for tasks such as data extraction, parsing logs or transformation of text files. So although there is still some use cases for Perl, I definitely do not think it is worth learning nowadays in 2023 when there is so much more out there to put your focus to. Last but definitely not least on the list is something. I ordered dog food and this is what I get. Let's try that again. Last but definitely not least on the list is Adobe Cold Fusion. And this is something that I hadn't heard a lot about, but I was really curious as to what it was used for. So Adobe Cold Fusion is a web application development platform that was introduced in 1995 by Allaire, Allaire Corporation, and later acquired by Adobe. So Cold Fusion was used for creating dynamic data-driven web development or web applications using a proprietary scripting language. So some of the common use cases for it included CMS systems. It was used to build and maintain CMS platforms, e-commerce applications, uh, data-driven applications, and also to web services and APIs. Sounds really interesting. So why the decline of this technology? Well, to a few factors. One in which we are all very familiar with, I hope anyways, which is modern web development technologies came around, such as PHP. Love it or hate it, PHP is one of, it's the opposite of this list. It's something that is still very in demand. So many websites use it. And I know it can be painful to pick up and learn or a lot of, it's just a fussy programming language. Trust me, it was my first, my first job was with PHP and Symfony, so I get it. But also to Ruby on Rails, JavaScript frameworks, they all emerged and they kind of offered similar or better capabilities. And in turn, because they were open source, they were more cost effective for these companies. Another reason that Cold Fusion eventually declined and is no longer around is because of the learning curve and proprietary nature. So as you know, tech is 
all about being open source and sharing information. And with Cold Fusion and the proprietary nature and unique syntax that it had, it made it less accessible to new developers. And they didn't want to spend the time learning this. These declined with many other factors, made Cold Fusion not so cold anymore, not so hot anymore. Gone. You know what I mean. All right, those are the five technologies that I would not be learning in 2023 and will not be learning in the future unless something crazy changes and it comes up that I need to. Uh, but I really, really hope not. Anyways, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Do you agree with this? Do you disagree? What are some other technologies you would add? Leave in the comments. Let's have a good conversation around this and uh, hit that subscribe button for more tech, coding and career related videos. Now I gotta go feed my dog who was parking earlier. Like how rude. <laughs>